Hello, welcome back. The title here is called Changing Decimals to Fractions. This is part one. Another title might be Converting uh, Decimals to Fractions. This is part one. In the last lesson, we learned how to go the other way. The last lesson, we started out with a fraction and we converted it to a decimal because decimals and fractions are just different ways of writing really the same information. So last lesson, we started with a fraction and we converted it to a decimal equivalent. Here we're going the other way. We're going to start with a decimal and then we're going to convert it to a fraction equivalent. Actually, these lessons are a little easier in my opinion to do. They're a little easier to, to just actually do the work. So let's see how to handle it. Let's say that I want to take the decimal 0 0.3 and I want to convert it to a fraction in a fraction in simplest form or in lowest terms. So what does this mean, by the way? The zero means zero holes. I don't have any whole pizzas or any whole candy bars. I have some fraction. And the 0.3 represents some fractional part. Uh, when we get to 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, then we roll over to get one whole candy bar or one whole pizza. So we're really far away from that. We only have a small fraction of a pizza right now. What is the fraction? Well, all you have to do is look and say, well, this is in the tenths place, because remember it goes tenths, hundredths, thousands, ten thousands, and so on. So to write this as a fraction, all you have to do is recognize that this is the tenths place. How many of them do I have? I have three of them in the tenths place. It's three tenths. That's actually what this means. And since this fraction is already simplified, I cannot s divide top and bottom to simplify it further. This is the final answer. So you see, this is a really important example for you to really suck in and internalize it and, and just think about it. This decimal is telling you everything you need to know about the fractional thing, uh, the, what it means as a fraction. It's in the tenths place. How many do I have? Three of them. So it's three tenths. Remember, we can count by tenths. One tenth, then two tenths, then three tenths means I have three little wedges of a pizza e each shaped to be a size of a tenth. I have three of them. That's what this actually means. So to write it as a fraction, it's three tenths. If I were to start with this and convert it to a decimal, what would I do? Just from the last lesson, if I said, hey, turn this thing into a decimal, you would say, okay, I'm gonna have an invisible decimal here. I'm dividing by 10 because that's what it is, is division. I'm gonna move the decimal one spot to the left, 0 0.3, that's exactly it. So you can go either way back and forth and get to the same answers. It should all work out. If you're doing it all correct, it should all make sense and give you all the correct answers, no matter which way you go. All right, let's take a look at problem number two, if I can ever get there. Problem number two, let's convert the decimal 0 0.1 into a fraction. Well, again, this is in the tenths place. So what does it mean to have 0 0.1? I have one slice worth a tenth. So I have one tenth. The one goes up here and it's in the tenths place. The three goes up there and it's in the tenths place. I cannot simplify this anymore, so the answer is one tenth. Now, if I gave you instead this and said, go backwards, convert this to a decimal, you would divide it. The decimal is here, invisible, and you would move it by dividing by 10, 0 0.1. That's what we started with. So that's what you have. All right, let's take a look at problem number three. 0 0.4, let's convert that to a fraction. All right, so same story. It's in the tenths place. How many do I have? Four of them in the tenths place. I have four tenths, four tenths. That's what that means. But this fraction is not fully simplified. They're both even numbers. I can take the four, I can take the 10, and I can simplify this by dividing by two and dividing by two. Four divided by two is two. 10 divided by two is five. This fraction I cannot simplify any further. So this is the simplest fraction that is 0 0.4. If you go to a calculator and divide two divided by five, this is what you're going to get. If you take four and divide it by 10, you're going to get the same thing. This fraction is equal to 0.4. This fraction is equal to 0.4. How can that be? It's because these two fractions are the same thing. I've just simplified it to something simpler. So when we represent these as a fraction, we always want the simplest form. Let's take a look at the next problem. Let's convert something a little more complicated. 1.2. Let's turn that into a mixed number. 1.2. What does this mean? It means I have one whole plus 0.2, which is a fractional part. So let's ignore the whole for now. Only let's look at the 0 0.2. Uh, the 0 0.2. Uh, so let's look at this. The 0 0.2 is what? Two tenths, right? So is this in the tenths place? And there's two of them, so two tenths. Right? Now, can I simplify this any further? Well, 
two on the top, 10 on the bottom, I can divide both top and bottom by two. So two divided by two is one and 10 divided by two is five. So what we figured out is that the point two part of the problem is equal to the fraction one fifth. So that's the fractional part, but the original problem had one whole plus one fifth. One whole plus one fifth, how do you write that together? We say that it's one and one fifth. So this would be the best way to write it. One uh, and one fifth, we're converting it into a mixed number. You could write this as an improper fraction if you want, there's nothing wrong with that. But when you have one whole plus a fractional part, it's very common to write it like this. If you wanted to make it into a improper, you would multiply one times five is five, plus one is 10, uh, I'm sorry, one plus five is five, plus one is not 10, plus one is six. It would be six fifths for the answer there. But we just leave it in mixed number form. All right, halfway done. Let's take a look at 0 0.002. That is a decimal. We're going to convert it to a fraction. All right, so what do we do with this? Well, this is the tenths place. This is the hundredths place. This is the thousandths place. So what is the value of this? I have two in the thousandths place. I have two thousandths, right? Not two tenths, because that would be here. Not two hundredths, because that would be here. But two thousandths which would be there, two over a thousand. How do I simplify this fraction? Well, I can divide top and bottom by two. They're both even numbers. Two divided by two is one, and what is a thousand divided by two? 500. So this is the simplest fraction that equals 0 0.002, one over 500. All right, next problem. Let's convert the decimal. 2.16 into a mixed number. So we're gonna ignore the two, we're only going to focus on the 0 0.16. This is, what does this mean? This is the tenths place and this is the hundredths place. So I do have one in the tenths and six in the hundredths, but as a whole together, I have 16 in the farthest position over here, which is the hundredths place. So you write it as 16 hundredths. I want to make sure you understand that because you do have one in the tenths place and you do have six in the hundredths place. But when you add all those together, it's the same as 16 in the hundredths place. This is the same thing with regular numbers, by the way. Let's go over here. The number 34, what does this mean? It means I have, uh, I have three in the tenths place and, I, and not the tenths place, the tens place, three tens, and I have four in the ones place. But all together, we put it together and we say it's 34 ones in the farthest position, 34 ones. What about 76? Yes, it's seven in the tens position for 70. Worth, this is worth 70. And this is worth six in the ones position. So this is worth something in the tens and this is worth something in the, in the ones. But we put them together, we say that it's 76 ones. And so here's the same thing. This is one in the tenths place. This is six in the hundredths place, but all together it's 16 in the farthest position in the hundredths position. So how do I simplify this? 16 one hundredths. What do I do? Well, I know that I can divide the top by four and the bottom by four because four times four is 16, so I divide and get a four. 100 divided by four is 25, and I can't really simplify that any further. So I take this fractional representation, that was just talking about the, the 0.16, and then I attach it to the two holes for two and four 25ths as a mixed number, two and four 25ths. If you wanted to write it as an improper fraction, you could of course convert that if you'd like. All right, we're on the home stretch, just a few more problems. Let's take a look at the number 1.01, .01, and we're gonna convert that into a mixed number. So again, forget about the whole number, let's just focus on the 0.01. So I have nothing in the tenths place, but only one in the hundredths place. So I have one one hundredth. All right, that's the fraction. I can't simplify it anymore. I can't divide top and bottom, so this is it. And I attach it to the one, so it's one and one one hundredth. One and one one hundredth, that's the final answer. All right, only three more. Let's take a look at eight, 0.6, and we're gonna convert this into a mixed number. Same thing, we're gonna ignore the whole number, we're gonna focus only on the 0 0.6. And this is in the tenths place. So what does this mean? Six in the tenths place. Now I can simplify this by dividing top and bottom by what? By two, they're both even numbers. 
and what will I get? Six divided by two is three, and 10 divided by two is five. So three fifths is what the 0.6 means. I attach it to the whole of eight, eight and three fifths. This means eight plus three fifths. This means one plus one one hundredth, and so on and so forth. All right, only two more problems and we're done. Let's take a look at 2.42, convert this to a mixed number. Let's focus on the 0 0.42. So yes, I do have four in the tenths and I have two in the hundredths, but again, taken as a whole, I have 42 in the farthest position, which is the hundredths place, 42 hundredths. That's what I have, tenths, hundredths, 42 hundredths. How do I simplify this? I can say 42, 100, and I can divide top and bottom by two. Now, if you take 42 and you'd go and do the long division divide by two, you're going to get 21. And 100 divided by two is 50. So this fraction, 21 fiftieths, is what 2.42 means. I'm sorry, 0 0.42 means. Now we attach it to the two and 21 fiftieths. So this is the representation of this decimal form, 2.42. 2 and 21 fiftieths. And then we have the final question, which is 3.5. Convert that to a mixed number. Let's work on the 0 0.5. This means I have in the tenths place, I have five of them. Five in the tenths place, five tenths. Now, I want to simplify this. What do I do? Well, five tenths, I can divide the top by five and I can divide the bottom by five. So five divided by five is one and 10 divided by five is two. So I get one half and then I attach it to the whole number, which is the three, making it three and one half. So again, I hope you can see that fractions and decimals really do, they really are joined at the hip. And you can see it right here. When we talk about decimals, the place values are fractional. They're tenths, they're hundredths, they're thousandths. That's why fractions and decimals go together because they are really just they're tied together in our representation of what numbers are and what decimals really are. All of the decimal values are fractions, tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, millionths, as you keep going down and down in the decimals. I'd like you to solve every one of these yourself. Follow me on to part two. We'll wrap up your practice with converting a decimal into a fraction.